name is Cortland Montgomery. And my name is Couture Green. And welcome to Real News Network, where we keep it real for you and all of our viewers. And these are your current events for today. Now, Mitt Romney clarifies his stance on abortion. On Wednesday, he stated that he would immediately move to defund Planned Parenthood, which is a women's organization that provides abortion assistance. Now, many um, Republicans have introduced legislation that would strip funding from Planned Parenthood. And also, Mitt Romney said that he has no room in his budget for that organization. Now, a spokeswoman for Mitt Romney reinstated that he is actually opposed to abortion. She said that Mitt Romney is proudly pro-life and that he will be a pro-life president, Andrea Saul said in a statement. Romney wrote in a piece headlined, My Pro-Life Pledge, and in that piece he expressed his support for overturning Roe v. Wade, disavowing federal funds from being spent on um, abortions, and also that he will nominate judges that are in line with his views. It is also crazy that he said in a television interview that legitimate rape rarely results in pregnancy and that, quote, a woman's body has a way to try to shut down all of that, unquote. Yeah, about that. That's kind of crazy. I don't know how a woman's body is supposed to just do that, but all right, Mitt Romney, I guess you just know. That just really makes me mad. <laughs> a Pakistani teen activist shot by the Taliban was moved to a military hospital in Rala Pindi Thursday in critical condition. Malala Yousafzai, 14, was flown in by a helicopter. Malala is in critical condition, said Lieutenant Junaid Khan, the head of neurosurgery at the Penshwar Hospital. A day before, surgeons removed a bullet lodged in her neck. On Tuesday, Taliban militants stopped a van carrying three girls, including Malala, on their way home from school. One of the gunmen asked which one was Malala. When the girls pointed out who she was, the men opened fire. The bullet struck all three girls. Yusfazi is an activist um, for education for girls. She was quoted in an interview saying that, I have the right to an education, Malala said in a CNN interview last year. I have the right to play, I have the right to sing, I have the right to go to a market, I have the right to speak up. Wow, that's crazy that we will be talking about that today because today is actually International Day of the Girl, which is a day set aside on the calendar to advocate for girls' rights and to raise awareness for gender biases. And um, CNN spoke to some of the most remarkable and influential women in this world, asking this question, looking back, what one piece of advice would you give your 15-year-old self? And I just picked three women from the, um, the lineup, and the first woman is Melinda Gates, which is the wife of Bill Gates. And she said, quote, make sure you continue to trust what you know about yourself and stay true to what you believe in. Oprah Winfrey said, you have spent too many days and years trying to please others and what they have wanted you to be. You will have to learn that the wounds of your past, rape, molestation, whippings for stepping out of place and not being allowed to show anger or cry afterwards, damaged your self-esteem. Yet through it all, you've held on to belief in God and God's belief in you. Victoria Azarenka, the world's number one tennis player, said, Follow your dreams. Always be yourself. Never be afraid to show the real you and have fun. Always live in the present. And I thought those were beautiful quotes for women and young men to cultivate in their everyday lives. Oh, absolutely. Back to the political side of things, President Barack Obama conceded in an interview Wednesday. His first face-off with Mitt Romney last week in Denver was a bad night for him, but maintained his performance at the debate didn't alter the state of the presidential race. Governor Romney had a good night, Obama said in a sit-down interview with ABC News. I had a bad night. Following last week's matchup in Denver, most observers named Romney the clear winner, stating that Obama was not as enthusiastic as he's used to being. Obama said in Wednesday's interview that omissions from the first debate would not determine game changers come November. What's important is the fundamentals of what this race is about and haven't changed, Obama said. Governor Romney went to a lot of trouble to try to change what his positions are. Do you agree with that statement or what do you think? I think that, um, Although it did seem as though President Obama was not in a maybe the best of debating mood that night, I still think he did a, a really good job at stating his um, positions on what he believed in. And I, yeah. I guess you know a lot of people are saying that um, Mitt Romney is going back and forth, wavering on what he's saying. But you know, I don't think that that night is going to change it. I don't think so either. We need to see a lot more. I think we need to see the vice presidents. 
which will be coming on Thursday night, so mm -hmm. you guys better tune in. And I'm pretty sure there's going to be other debates as well, am I correct on that? Yeah, there's going to be two other debates, so, you know, just really they have to be on their A-game about it. Absolutely. All right, now that's all for current events for today. We're going to shoot it over to M3 for where music matters most with Chantise and Brandon J. Hey guys, welcome to M3 where music matters most. I'm Chantise. It's your boy Brandon J. All right, so we're going to jump straight into it. This weekend, the 2012 BET Hip Hop Awards was finally aired, and we got a lot of things we want to talk about. First of all, it was shot downtown, um, around the corner from Georgia State at the Atlantic Civic Center. Did you guys find any celebrities? I didn't, but maybe some of you guys did. What about you, Brendan J? Well, you know me and Diddy be kicking it. But, uh, <laughs> nah, uh, I didn't, but um, as anticipated, everyone wants to see the cipher. So, I'm going to give you my quick, you know, uh, cipher recap of the best and the worst. Well, uh, I think the best was the West Coast. The West Coast definitely held it down. Kendrick Lamar, Snoop Dogg, you guys did your thing. One thing that I didn't like about the Cyphers was uh, some of the grouping of the artists. Mac Miller, Mystical, I don't know how that happened or how that came into thoughts. Uh, maybe they were just trying something different, but I definitely think uh, also sc Schoolboy Q should have been with the West Coast team. I mean, come on now. Um, and also there were some altercations. Uh, during the BET Hip Hop Awards. We had a lot of fights going on. Uh, Shantice, I know you heard about the uh, Ross and Jeezy situation. Yeah. Um, I don't know if some of you guys heard, but Rick Ross and Young Jeezy, them and their entourage kind of got into a little scuffle. There was no real punches that were thrown, but we heard that there was a lot of he say, she say, and some, some shots were um, fired, but we don't really know if that's true or not. That's just rumor, but you never really know. We gotta watch the story unfold. What about you? And also, there was another fight outside. Uh, 50 Cent and his <laughs> little G-Unit entourage got in gun plays ASS. Um, it was it was really nasty. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw the video. There were two videos that were released. Actually, uh, I, I saw both of them. The first one was kind of shot from far away. You couldn't really see that well. But the second one was up close. And Gunplay got tossed all over the place. Uh, he did manage to get up and throw some swings at um, one guy, but who knows. Uh, also, Gunplay recently just turned himself in for a few charges he had. I guess it's because of his name servicing uh, because of the fights. Uh, 50 Cent was spotted bowling <clears throat> with Gunplay's chain on. So, uh, Dang. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's really messed up what's going on in the hip-hop game. Uh, you guys got, got to get it together, but we all know that the whole MMG, G-Unit, 50 Cent thing has been going on for a while now. Uh, speaking of which, Rick Ross recently just uh, released a mixtape, The Black Bar Mitzvah. Why he's he trying to be Jewish, I don't know. Um, <laughs> it, it was a really interesting mixtape. There were a few songs that I like, um, but some of it was repetitive to me. Um, you know, he was just on a few songs. He did have some bars, you know, it was pretty good. Classic, classic Rick Ross, but he left a lot of the rest of the songs, just the songs, I don't know why he did that, but um, you know, if you want to go download it, definitely download it. Um, I listened to it and it was it was okay in my opinion. Okay. Well, also in the mixtape world, Iggy Azalea released her new mixtape today on October 11th. It's called Trap Gold. Trap Gold. Some of you guys should go out there, cop it, comment mm -hmm. down on below, and let us know what you guys think. I like Iggy. Some of our castmates love Iggy as well. So let us know what you think. My favorite part of the segment has finally come up. Um, you guys who are Jay-Z and Beyonce's fans were probably super excited. <laughs> Brandon J feels personally upset about this because he swears Beyonce is his. Look, Beyonce, <laughs> that's all I want to say. Look, you just need to tell Jay-Z what's up, you know what I'm saying? I know, you know, me and you have been affiliated for a long time. Um, you know what I'm saying? I just want you to tell him the truth. That's it. Well, in other news, Jay-Z and Beyonce performed on stage this weekend. Um, Beyonce joined her husband on a on stage in Brooklyn. She performed Diva and they performed Crazy in Love together. He playfully patted her bum bum and she ran up to him and they actually lip locked. Yes. They had public displays of affection. So I got really excited about that. <laughs> Others not so excited, but hey, you know, it is what it is. 
But anything else you want to talk about? Um, no, I think that about covers it. So thank you guys for tuning in. This is RNN, and this is our segment M3, where music matters most. I'm Brandon J. This is the lovely Shanties. We'll see you guys next Friday. Pow. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Vontae Robinson, a.k.a. Vontae the Great, bringing you another edition of RNN News. We're going to try a new segment on uh, Word of the Week. And this week's word is turnip, yeah. not the vegetable. All right, so the origin from the futuristic era, circa 2007 to 2009, you know, i.e. J Money, Travis Porter, Young L.A., couple of them. Now, turn up as a noun, a social gathering consisting of scantily clad women. Yeah, that's it. We have a verb here. The ensuing process of inebriation prior to or during a social gathering characterized by consumption of excessive amounts of alcohol or other substances. Uh, turn up in a sentence. I'm finna turn up on this nigga, bro. Now, turn up in a sentence. If I may quote one future, I'm turning up, I'm turning up, it's going to be hard to turn me down. Future. And uh, most commonly used sentence, turn up, turn up, turn up. In conclusion, this has been the word of the week. So um, be enlightened and remember folks, turn up. Yeah. Hi guys, my name is Eric Cooper and this is the Political Issues segment. The name of today's segment is Why Obama Got Waxed. And if you watch the debate, you probably know Obama really did get waxed. So I'm, I'm going to break it down and tell you why. Um, the first thing I want to mention is a lot of people think that Mitt Romney used a debate strategy called the Gish Gallup strategy. And that's basically where you just say so much bullshit at the same time that the opponent just can't respond to all of it and or even make their own points in the you know short amount of time that they're given now a lot of the stuff you know I'm not gonna mention everything but like for example Obama kept bringing up the uh, five trillion dollar tax cut what Mitt Romney do about that Mitt Romney was like no I'm not doing a five trillion dollar tax cut he is but he just he just kept you know refuting that and then he said Obama was gonna cut Medicare um, Obviously, that's untrue. Obama's not going to cut Medicare. The $716 billion cut in Medicare is just like subsidies and waste. And even Paul Ryan, the vice president, in his budget has the same cut in that budget. So it, the cut is so good that the vice presidential candidate for the Republican side has it on it. So basically, the point of the Gish Gallup theory is to just put out so much misinformation that your opponent is thrown off and they can't respond. And that's basically what he did. And that's why Mitt Romney won today, because Obama didn't know how to how to deal with it. When he when he mentioned the Medicare cuts, he mentioned that Obama's gonna cut Medicare ten times. And Obama never said, no, that's untrue. He never he just never refuted it. So, you know, that's that's one reason he he that's the main reason I believe he lost the debate. On that line of thought, I wanna uh, read you a New York Times quote, and this is actually a New York Times quote from 1984 regarding debates and it reads you can say anything you want during a debate and 80 million people hear it if reporters then document that a candidate spoke untruthfully so what maybe 200 people read it maybe 2,000 or maybe 20,000 but like that's a good point I mean 80 like million people can see I think this debate was like 61 million you know, 61 million people see the debate, and somebody writes a review and says, you know, oh, this guy said all this unfactual stuff. Most of those people don't read it. And so, the uh, debate strategy for Mitt Romney, I mean, it worked to perfection. I mean, whether you think that's morally right or whatever, doesn't matter. It's politics, so it works to perfection. Another thing I want to uh, mention in regards to uh, presidential debates is uh, how media use fairness standards and how those fairness standards actually create uh, an atmosphere of unfairness. For example, let's say one guy says like 97 lies and another guy says seven lies. What the media does traditionally, you know, in our society, is say three from this guy and three from that guy. But it's just unequal. This guy put out way more, you know, misinformation than the other person. But when you like 
frame it in that manner where, oh, he said three things that are unfactual and he said three things that are unfactual, it, it creates an atmosphere of unfairness because this guy, like I said, just said a whole bunch of bullshit, basically. And another thing I wanted to mention, the Associated Press actually put a, a, a cap on Michelle Bachman, a Republican uh, congressman. They put a cap on fact-checking Michelle Bachman because she just said so many, many things that are untruthful that they just thought that they, they would be perceived as uh, biased just because of all of the fact-checking. And so that's one thing I want to point about, out about our media. And then another example of how our media failed, there's a CNN fact check on Obama's claim that Romney's tax plan would add $5 trillion to the deficit. And basically they said that statement by Obama was false because Mitt Romney said that they would be offset by, you know, reducing deductions or whatever. But the, the reason why this is bad reporting is just simply because that's not how you do a fact check. You don't take the guy's word for it to say he's going to offset it. He has to have some particular policy. And so you know, that's just another, like, gross misfailing of the media, in my opinion. Um, and then, like, for example, an uh, interesting question to ask on a fact check would be, are there certain deductions that would offset a $5 trillion tax cut? That would be a good fact check to see if there were actually, you know, deductions that he could do that with. And there are organizations that have done that check, and the only way he could offset it is by, like, getting rid of stuff like home mortgage uh, deductions, which basically means that people in the middle class would end up paying $500 more in taxes than they do now. And people of the higher income, you know, 1%, the top percent percentage of wage owners would have their taxes decreased. And so that's how fact checks should be done. Um, basically, that's how our media kind of influences debates. And um, also, that's why Obama got waxed. Uh, my name is Eric Cooper. This is Political Issues. The next segment is Vontae Robinson. Let's talk sports. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy Vontae Robinson, a.k.a. Vontae the Great. I'm DeMarcus Denham, a.k.a. D. Twice the Swami. And this is Let's Talk Sports. We're going to do a little segment that we like to call Like It, Love It, or Hate It. We have a few statements from our viewers on Twitter, and we want you. We want to actually going to tell you whether we like it, love it, or hate it or not. All right, here we go. The NBA's new anti-flopping rules. Like it, love it, or hate it. I like it, man. You know, um, there's been too many times that uh, the legitimacy of the game, like flop, flopping, happens too often in the NBA. First off, I think I think they just need to cut that shit out at all. So. I'm, I'm in favor of the rule, like like Manu G, you're going to have to just, you know, man up and just take that chin check. Chris Bosh, you know, even even LeBron, dog, you're too big to be, you know what I'm saying, playing dead, bro. It ain't going to fly no more. I love it as well, man. Just man up, take the hit, get back on defense. Simple as that. All right. Shaq's comments about Dwight Howard. Like it, love it, or hate it? I, I hate to see... Older athletes, or like older, anyone in any field of profession, I hate to see like the older generation like bash or talk down towards the younger generation. Like, stop. You say Brooke Lopez and Andrew Bynum are better than Dwight Howard? Man, stop hating Shaq. Your time is done. You got your four rings. Just let it go, man. Yeah, as, as much as it pains me to say, like, like Shaq, Shaq is my dog, but yeah, yeah. I hate it, man. Like, straight up, stop hating getting money, Shaq. Simple as that, bro. Like, you know. Your time is gone. Let Dwight get in there and see what he can do. You know, I mean, it's still only one Superman. But, I mean, stop hating getting money, Superman. <laughs> Sean Payton was allowed to attend the Saints game this past weekend for Drew Brees' historic milestone, despite being suspended for the season. Like it, love it, or hate it? Love it, man. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad, you know, Sean Payton got to be there for that historic moment. You know, I mean... Drew Brees and Sean Payton have that father-son relationship. I mean, who, 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 who is Roger Goodell or anybody to like not let him even be in the building? Like, he's he's not he's not even the play caller. Like, you know, he's there purely as a spectator. You know what I mean? So I don't see what the harm in that really is. 
So, yeah, I, I loved it, man. I'm glad. You know, shouts out to Drew Brees. And um, my, boy, my boy D Twice over here. Uh, Go Falcons. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good, Next guys. question. Chipper Jones send off. Like it, love it, or hate it? I hate it. I hate it. I hate, hate it, bro. It, bro. <laughs> I hate it. I, I feel like it's being his last bat, the legend that he is, taking the Atlanta Braves to their only World Series victory. I feel like, regardless of how bad the flyout call was, the fans should have respected his send off more than that. Yeah, that, that's exactly how I feel about it, too. I mean, this, this was this man's last Major League Baseball game. And that's how he's going to remember it. Charles Barkley thinks LeBron can be better than Jordan. Like it, love it, or hate it? Uh, I, I actually like it. Now, do, do I think it's, you know, he's actually going to be better than Jordan? Only, only time could tell. But, I mean, LeBron does possess the capabilities to play four, if not five, positions on the court. He is, you know, faster and stronger than Jordan. I, I think he has, you know, far as the athletic tools and things like that. But, you know, they always talk about those intangibles. So, I don't know if he'll be able to get over that hump. And uh, ho hopefully he can collect a little more hard work. I think, you know, he definitely needs, I, I, I say at least three, but definitely at least two rings to, you know, even be like exactly on the same playing field as Jordan. To me, anyway, and I'm a Heat fan, so. I mean, I don't say I hate it, but I don't too much like it either. I mean, I'm pro Jordan, so I'm. Michael Jordan just, as you said, those intangibles. He just seemed to have more of a, a will to win. Like just, he was just one of those spectacular players. Just like when he took the court, just everything he could change the Florida game at will. Like, and you know, plus the six rings. I see LeBron getting two or three, but I don't think he's going to make it up to that many. Cause especially the way the league is saturated now where there's so much different powers, uh -uh. different areas of the league. You, you're right. Like you I, got, I don't even think Kobe getting six. Bro. Really, really? Like, you got Dwight Howard, six. Kevin Durant, and Chris Paul, all of them in the West. And then you got, like, the Celtics, the Bulls, the Nets in the East. Like, it's going to be tough. LeBron's getting three, though. He's, he's, <laughs> he's, he's going to get at least three, though. I, I, I see it, bro. I mean, yeah. Kansas City fans cheer after Matt Castle got hurt in this past weekend's game against Baltimore. Like it, love it, or hate it? Hate it. For one, how, how can you even call yourself a fan? That's a total disgrace. Some, someone's getting injured, someone's getting injured, and then you're cheering? Then let, let it be your own... Uh, you know what I'm saying? Someone who plays on your team, the team that you're going for, you pay tickets to come here, and then that, that's how you do it? I mean, that, that's just not a true fan to me, honestly, the way, the way I see it. Especially, it's like, we don't even know the severity of Matt Castle's injury. Well, at least at the time, we didn't know the severity of Matt Castle's injury. So, I mean, had, had this man, you know, I know it's a little extreme, but had this man died on that football field, I don't know how the people would have felt after cheering, you know. I hate it as well. Coming, me being a Falcons fan and like seeing how some of the fans react when we were on tough times. It, it I, I feel for Matt Castle and the rest of the Kansas City Chiefs. Like that's just disrespectful, man. All right, last statement: South Carolina's chances at the BCS national championship. Like it, love it, or hate it. <laughs> Hate it. They think I play a tough University of Florida team, and regard even if they did get to the SEC championship, they get rolled all over by them. All right. Uh, I'm gonna say that I like it for them to be in the national championship, possibly. But far as winning, uh, not so much. I mean, don't 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 get me wrong. Marcus Lattimore is he's phenomenal. I mean, he's he he's a bulldozer with feet. Period. Like you know, he's he's gonna he's gonna make those two yards that he gets or three yards or however long he's running the ball. It's gonna be painful for whoever's trying to tackle that man. And then uh, South Carolina's defense might be like top three in the nation, in my opinion. So, only thing is, you know, they they got all the tools and everything, but so does Bama. So, um, far as them winning the national championship. 
I don't like that that much. But then being there, oh yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up. So it's your boy Vontae Robinson, aka Vontae the Great, with uh, Let's Talk Sports. And um, Demar Daniel, aka D Swatch Swami. And tune in next week because we got mail time. Mail time. Mail time. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an important time here in the United States. It's getting close to November, you're getting cold, you need that cuddle buddy. Everyone knows what season it is. It's cupping season. Now you ladies make us think that cupping season is like the NFL draft. Well in all actuality, it kind of is. So we're going to get you inside the mind of us. So next week, you will be seeing the 2012 cupping season draft. Is we're gonna give you a little preview about the uh, 2012 Cuffin Season Draft. Make Brum, your picks, Brum. fellas. Make your picks. And um, you know, we got the draft analysts here. Uh, the Swami, the Great. We're gonna uh, go ahead and break it down a little bit. So uh, go ahead and give him a little spill, Swami. Oh yeah, like you know, next week we get into this draft. You know, you got it's it's about that time to start reevaluating your rosters. Like try to pick up on like some some. Good picks out there trying to get your points up, man. So we're gonna look at my projections. I got you know at the top I got Beyonce Knowles Carter. You know she you know she got she, financial she, she, stability. She's she still Beyonce Knowles. She's still Beyonce Knowles. She got the financial stability. You know, she's about her work, man. You know, she's a loving woman. Nice family lady. She about to just had a kid, you know. And like looking at some of my, my picks, I'm gonna explain some of these like Number seven, we got Karuchi Train. You know, she just came off that big breakup with Chris Brown. You know, he found her, and which is exactly why at the bottom, hi Rihanna. We got, <laughs> got Rihanna dropping down to number ten on my projections. We can't can't forget the sleepers. You know, we got ladies like Gabrielle Union. You know, we got like Kiki Palmer on here. You know, the stocks been rising lately. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. She got the great. And uh, you know, I'm gonna direct you over here. We got we got Rihanna in the liability category over here, uh, along, along with uh, Nicki Minaj. She be taxing, bro. Y'all y'all know she been taxing. Um, Megan Good, she's also a liability for the simple reason that, bro, she she don't play the hoe in too many movies, bro. <laughs> On the real, dog. Like you, know, you can't cut that, bro. Be real with yourself, man. Be real. Don't say it's uh, so short, man. You might be you might be ass uh, 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 we, we we got Oprah, who's who stock increased once. Stacey Dash stock dropped. Everybody's stock went up. One Stacey Dash stock stop. You know, see, I got a question mark here. You know what I'm saying? It's talking about voting for Mitt Romney and stuff. I mean, you know, you can vote for whoever you want, but I mean, you know, I'm, I'm Obama, dog. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to say that like like that. So, um, then we got Oprah right here. You know, Oprah, she got a fat old ass. You know what I'm saying? Plenty of money, bro. I'm telling you, dog. Oh, yeah, yeah. Assets greater than finances. I mean, come on, bro. Use context clues. You know, ass, <laughs> sets. Know what I mean? On the real. On the real, though. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all, y'all ain't even ready for this. Y'all ain't even ready for the goddamn formula, bro. I ain't even, I ain't even finna get it. Just, just know, just know, we subtract the body count. We taking that out. You know what I mean? That's another reason why making good is liability. You know, so you gonna get into that. And then uh, Serena, another fat old ass. You know what I'm saying? Um, Champion, bro, goddamn, you know what I'm saying, do her thing in Wimbledon, all that good shit, know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, let me explain something about this formula. Might be a few words missing, ladies, like, don't bear with us. Tolerability, that counts all for personality and activity, like, attributes, things like that, like, we don't, we don't look too shallow over you know what I mean? You know, we have to just show you, like, <laughs> yes, true, yeah, true, yes, true, you know. true, 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 yeah. true. Activity. Person, yeah, 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 yeah. All, all that, all that, pretty much encompasses tolerability, along with other stuff like you know, cooking for your man's, you know, all that good stuff, rubbing a nigga's stomach. You know what I mean? I'm mean, intangible, man. Like, like for real, for real. Like, you, you, you gotta be a loving, thing. you gotta be a loving woman. You know what I mean? I mean, this, this is the cover season draft right here. You know, 2012 cover season draft. Like, be there. You gonna want to see this? We're gonna be shooting this uh, next week, so you don't want to miss it. Then the week after, we're gonna have um, is chivalry dead? The thirst is real. That's coming soon. We'll be having our draft analyst for this season's draft. 
including me, Vontae Robinson, and Demarcus Denham, as we'll analyze their draft stocks. And we're only going to be revealing the top five in this week's uh, draft. So, tune in next week and aren't in special, the 2012 Cuffing Season Draft. Stay tuned. What's going on, man? It's your boy Brandon J. This is your boy No Sleeve. And we, you know, we just want to thank y'all for watching another episode of RNN. Make yeah. sure you tune in next week where you'll, you know, we'll be bringing you guys your favorite segments once again. But also, we got something special for y'all next week. Don't forget, we're going to be bringing you guys the 2012 Cuffin' Season Draft. You know what I'm saying? Make sure y'all go check that oh, out. Yeah. As, as, as I heard, you know, it's believed that Brandon J has the first round pick. So, you know, you know, you, you, know you want to check that out, you know, so you see who goes first. You know what I'm saying? So, 2012 Cup of Season Draft. Make sure you guys check that out. Once again, thank you for watching another segment of RNA. See y'all next week. Damn, I forgot the rest of the lyrics, bro. <laughs> On the real. Oh my God. <laughs> On the real. Well, in real news, Jay Z and Beyonce performed um, this weekend. Courtney Montgomery. Am I named. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 All right. They still got to play at Subview. I mean, <laughs> University of Florida team. My bad, Georgia. <laughs> he said the letter tough UJ for I mean <laughs> a tough go dog <laughs> hey, fuck yeah, up, bro. Hey. me lady it looks to me like you need a little juice in your life cow me when that big old house gets lonely fight and I teleport from here to there you show me I'm supposed to be done I make sure you have your fun mm. pity paint <laughs> baby blue why don't, why don't you teach me something new? We're all, we're all just babies in my view. So cry, oh baby. Cry, oh baby. Hey, I said, pretty pink, mm, baby blue. Why don't, why don't you teach me something new? Oh, we're all, we're just babies in my view. So cry, oh baby. Crow, baby.